<laughs> Done. And we are live with Rachel, aka Crypto Finally. How are you, my friend? Hi, I am doing well. Um, it has been a long time since I've seen you or spoken to you, actually. Actually, you know, I like to start with uh, where I normally met people the first time. And I think if I'm not mistaken, it was partying in Toronto, right? It was in Toronto. Uh, it was in Toronto. And I what were you in town for? I was, oh my God. Um, I It was either Crypto Chicks or Futurist Conference. I think it was Crypto Chicks because that predated the Futurist Conference. It would have been the second Futurist that I met you at. Um, and we were playing a heated game of chess. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I do remember that. Oh, what a fun game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. That, that is how we met, though. Um, and that was really fun. I actually really loved Toronto. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I do remember. It was at, I think, Trevor's party or something like that. Right, it was right, at right, Trevor's right. house, um, and and it was really heated. There were a lot of people surrounding us watching this. I, I remember that. I remember that was fun. Uh, okay, so I guess let's dive into it. You know, um, you know, people, some people like complain about the fact that I spend too much time on, on kind of the intro, but just so people know, like, that's kind of the point of the show. I, I like to kind of focus on people's story and not so much about like, you know, the all time high. We'll get to that, I'm sure. But um, but I, I'm really interested, you know, kind of as I was mentioning earlier, like I see Bitcoin as a bit of a singularity, like a life transformative event. And I'm so curious about what people's lenses were prior to coming into it. And you can start with your first job, your, you know, diapers or like your parents, like first met, wherever you want, right? It's up to you. It could be like a year ago, but, but curious, curious. So what was, what was kind of like your story behind, uh, behind the scenes before you got into Bitcoin? So, I mean, it really does depend how far back we go. Um, but I think I've always been a quirky character, right? So like jack of all trades, sort of generalist in life um, as I've fallen through. So it's kind of like funny and interesting that I'd land in like such a weird space as cryptocurrency. Um, but I, I'm just going to say it. It's weird. We all know it's weird. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I've done a little bit of everything. You know, I was one of those, uh, we're going to go back to childhood really in a brief state. Um, I did gymnastics. I played rock drums. I, I came in number four in the um, in debate, in a policy debate in the state of New York. Uh, when I was like 15 years old, I was the only girl on the AV team. Um, and uh, that was just like high school. So I was like really dabbling in a lot of like sort of weird things um, overall. Um, I My first job, uh, if you wanna like jump directly to adulthood, I know that wasn't like a beautiful linear story I just told, but it's okay, we'll move past it. Um, <laughs> I, I worked in a, uh, a little fine food store. Um, and, and I was like the clerk at the, at the, the cash register. This was a really short held job. Uh, I didn't get along with <laughs> the other girls who worked there at all. They complained about me and I ate the food. Um, so I wasn't great for that position. Um, and I never worked retail again after that. That was the first and only time. Um, I wasn't a great employee, didn't love it. Uh, nothing was really meshing up. Um, then I started working in production where I started doing what I really wanted to do, right? Um, so beyond all those like sort of small jobs that I was taking, like freelance stuff, things that I just was not good at, I will admit it, I was bad at them and I was not a great young person. Um, I am older than I appear and I'm older than I present. Um, <laughs> but uh, I started doing production um, and that's, that's really what I wanted to do. Um, I worked freelance in production. I worked for companies uh, like uh, HPE, Weight Watchers on commercial stuff, um, Broadway shows, The Lion King, Wicked. I, I worked for the Blue Man Group for three years. Um, uh, you remember them, yes. Yeah. So, so that was one of my bigger first jobs was the Blue Man Group, right? So that one I had for cool. three, I had three years at that job. Um, it all went well, uh, did a good job there. Was that related to IBM? What? What was that? What was that related? Was that related to IBM? I'm trying to remember what that was related to the Blue Man Group. What was that? <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean by IBM. Um, when I eventually uh, was, I was liquidated from the Blue Man Group in a downsizing. They were sold to mm. uh, Cirque du Soleil. Um, I, it has nothing to do with IBM at all, but that's like. The, I know. I, maybe they had like them in a commercial or something. No, I don't know. Yes, but anyways. Actually, they, they, they might have been doing some tech stuff. You know, the Blue Man Group was really big mm. in Asia, um, bigger than it was in the United States. And, and they're only like, I think they're only like 20, 25 years old now, like the Blue Man Group overall. 
Um, mm. But yeah, I worked for them for three years. I did uh, I did social and commercial content with them. So like all of those wacky, like blue man group music videos and like social spots, like went through me. Um, I supervised the production space. Uh, which included doing like everything from building the sets, doing the lights, um, working with people from different production ends to like literally running in the room and screaming, get off that pogo stick. Um, so <laughs> it was a weird job. Um, the blue men are, are cool guys. Like they're the wackiest kind of people that you could work with. Um, and I worked with the, the creative department. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I got sort of tired of working for the man, you know, it was a fun, fun job, but I got tired of working for the man. Um, and, and so I, I sw after I fell out of that, I, I actually did substitute teaching, which I guess was my first um, step out of working for the man, because now I'm like, I can work whenever I want. I can go on this day. This is all like really, um, I know it's like a weird novice background. Like when it comes to then it's like I enter this financial sector. Um, but I was, I was substitute teaching. You'd be surprised though. Everyone is like, I mean, who had experience with Bitcoin? I mean, Bitcoin didn't even exist. I know. So it and, doesn't um, matter. <laughs> and, and not to mention, so the substitute teaching actually really helped me with crypto. And I can like sort of get into that too. Um, if you can get 30 children to sit down, you can talk to a room full of uh, adult men. Um, <laughs> good point. Good point. What, what were you substitute teaching? Like what year or age I, or whatever? I taught, um, I taught K through 12 uh, in cool. New York City. It was everything. I preferred the little ones because the older ones got self-aware about the fact that I was pretty young at the time, right? I probably started subbing when I was uh, 23 years old. Like when I was 23 years old is when I became a teacher. Um, and so I was very young. And, you know, if I look young now, I look young then. Um, and the older ones knew it, um, but it was really fun. Uh, K through 12, I taught every subject. I'm, I'm not great at math. Um, surprisingly enough, math is the one thing that I'm really not so great at. Um, and then I worked in uh, District 75 schools. Uh, so those are children uh, with special needs, um, uh, autism, Down syndrome, um, people, uh, you know, who children who need special care. Um, and there's always additional help in those classrooms. But I work primarily District 75. Um, or with uh, small little ones and in lower Manhattan and Brooklyn. Cool, cool, yeah. very interesting. Okay, so where, where does your story take you from there? So uh, you, you did production, uh, you, you're teaching. So I guess like the thread there is, you know, um, is you, you, you're kind of like mastering this ability to like, like keep people's attention, you know what I mean? Like it's not, and it's not easy to do, right? Well, it's difficult. In hindsight, I think I'm like really fighting a traditional career path, right? I think that's what's kind of going on in that story arc there is like, I'm freelancing, I'm like yelling at Blue Man Group members. I, mm. I'm deciding that I don't want a real job and I'm gonna go substitute teach every few days. Um, you know, at the time the pay was really good. Um, you know, if you're looking at, you know, obviously far removed from cryptocurrency um, because I know that things things are so different in our industry. Um, overall, like it, you, there, there are no um, everyday jobs in cryptocurrency right now. I don't know how to put that any better. Um, there are no people working retail. There are no substitute teachers. There are no, you know, basic um, trait jobs in this industry. Uh, it's all people who own their own company, people who are doing these specialized skill sets, like all of these things. Obviously teaching is a specialized skill set, but for some reason our government doesn't take it seriously. So for the purpose of this conversation, I saw include it. Um, mm -hmm. Just as far as pay scales and things like that go. Um, I, substitute teaching was good money for me, um, you know, and, and looking at any kind of job that I could get, you know, I was like a young person out of college looking for a real career. And um, there really uh, is a gap, I, I believe, for people um, who are my age, for the millennial generation, when it comes to the gig economy, right? Like there were no real career paths that were making sense to me. Um, mm. It was hard to get this regular kind of job. Like I worked for the Blue Man Group, but you know, and everyone in crypto is going to like, you know, I'm sure everyone's had their regular jobs. Um, Blue Man Group, I, and I did a lot of work. I was probably working 60 hours a week. I was supervising the entire production space. I was doing physical labor. I was loading trucks. I was handling international distribution, um, sourcing things for commercial. They paid me $40,000 a year. Um, and I was, that was a specialized job. You would have said that I was in charge of a lot of things there. There was no, they, they weren't offering me any, any more raise than that. Um, but that's what a traditional industry looked like. And that's what I was being offered. And I lived in New York city. 
right? I didn't live somewhere where that, that sounded like great money to me. I'm not undermining that. But at the time I'm like, I am rich. I am being paid an unbelievable salary. They take me so seriously, $40,000. What do you mean? Um, and I lived in New York city and my rent was like, you know, like varying between something like 1850 and then 2300. Like it just wasn't working out. Um, and it wasn't reasonable, but I really thought that it was. Um, um, and, and so when I started realizing that I wasn't, that's when I'm like, all right, new plan, let's try to like reassess my time and my energy um, as just an everyday millennial person, as someone who was never like uh, extremely savvy in, in, let's say, tech markets and finance markets and things like that. I didn't ever think that there was a different career path for me than these being offered, right? This is what they sell to regular people in the regular world. You get a $40,000 a job year and you're 23. Good for you. You are rich now. Um, and that's just the dream, right? Like that's the dream that we're all sold. And it took me, it took me um, going through all these jobs, trying to find all these weird get rich quick schemes. Like I was one of those guys. <laughs> I, I was, I was taking like a million freelance jobs. I was like, I worked, I think for like, I like maybe like five different companies that would offer you like, like go do a catering thing. And I was not good at any of them. Right. I was, I was the worst, like freelancing. I was good at production stuff, but you did not want me to like show up and like hand out hors d'oeuvres. I'm not the guy. Um, and you can tell that now. Like I, I just don't, I can just don't fit. I just don't knock it. Um, none of that was working out for me. Um, and then I, I had these friends, I guess. So now I'm like stumbling around in the world trying to figure out how to be an adult. Um, I'm substitute teaching. I was a cool teacher. I don't want to undermine that. I was a great teacher. Uh, I took that stuff seriously, got along with the kids just because just I'm not um, a great, great waitress doesn't mean that I wasn't reasonable. But um, uh, I had these friends um, who also did production, right? So like I've known them in and out from doing commercial stuff. They lived in Los Angeles and they came to New York City for consensus in 2018 um, and said, hey, Rachel, there are some parties. Like, do you want to come? And so I found myself at like 15 consensus after parties <laughs> in, in what it was, I guess, May of 2018, like talking to all these excited crypto people and like honestly hearing for the first time about like all of these young people who have you know found an industry that they're growing in i'm seeing people my age with their own companies i'm seeing people who are coming up with like revolutionary ideas and i'm thinking to myself oh my god is this my last chance right <laughs> you know so i i um I, I schmoozed him a little bit, um, you know, I was just networking and I didn't know anything about crypto or blockchain, nothing at all. But here I am talking to all of, you know, um, these people who are heavily involved. If you were at consensus in 2018, either you were an ICO scammer, swapping <laughs> nerd, or you were about to like be the biggest name in the game, right? You were, you were one of those three people. <laughs> But you don't you don't know who's who at that you time. You have no idea. You have no idea. And no one will know for another two years, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, but 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 I'm meeting all these all of these people and so like I'm just sort of like, oh wow, yeah, the blockchain. I, I can add some buzzwords. I don't remember what they were, like immutability. <laughs> like, that's so one, that's really, one for sure. Really basic stupid stuff. And like what I didn't realize at the time is they like, and I'm sorry to say it like this, and I fight this heavily in like all of my work. But a lot of these guys were just happy there was a girl at the party, right? They're letting me like like immutability. <laughs> like, like, anyway, um, I was having a great time. Um and uh, my friends saw like how well I sort of got along with the community, right? Like I, I'm ever loving, I've come from this weird like teaching background and blue man group background. Like I have been, I, I was on the debate team. I was the only girl on the AV team. Like I am used to the people who are in this room and <laughs> I'm having fun with them, right? Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think that my production <laughs> friends didn't really expect that. Um, and basically they were like, hey, Rachel, like this was awesome. Let's do work together. And uh, I started working on their YouTube channel, um, which was called Cryptonauts. Um, I was not a public face. I was helping them do some of the 
marketing social stuff on the back end working on the scripts um it was a full team we had one guy as a face and in 2018 um no shade uh nathan geo who i love all of them but in 2018 they were raining high they took a hiatus but if you were here in the space you probably knew who these guys definitely were because those videos were killing it they had like 150,000 view videos like explaining like iota if you've ever like have you ever seen a 150,000 view video about iota no um so it, it you know they were doing very successful work and um i started uh working with them um their stuff was really educational really good i actually still recommend it if you want to go get some like basic stuff it's crypto not um i believe they started making more content recently and i still work with geo um on some stuff uh in in my own personal endeavors now um he's he's a great guy he he took a crypto hiatus to become a coder and now he's proficient at that because geo is a genius and you know you always need a genius on your side <laughs> definitely definitely cool cool okay so we're in 2018 mid hey did you did you were you were you uh like were you born and raised in New York or elsewhere? I was. You were. You were. I was okay. Born and raised in New York City. Um, and I think you know that also sort of plays into my, my perspective on the world. Um, the, kind of what I was thrown into in the belief of the way that job structures work, careers work, pay scales work. New York City is swarmed with human beings. Um, and, and it's just it's a, it, a city life is a different lifestyle than growing up somewhere else. Um. And I think that that's sort of just what I saw, you know, you see people in these positions every single day, and this is what life is. Um, and, and it's interesting, um, not to say that everyone who, you know, everyone who works a job is, is you know, honest, hardworking, like, I, and, and honorable for the fact that, you know, we need people to fill these positions, um, and it shouldn't be taken for granted. But it's interesting the way it limits your worldview and your scope uh, when you see so much of it um and and sort of uh takes away your ability to be able to see opportunity outside of the bubble that you've been cast around and i think being in new york played a big role in that interesting interesting hey i have a question for you oh, like so as you were kind of going through all these life experiences what was like your relationship with money like like in the sense that were you like like 40k i've made it like i got all the money in the world or or did you hear it faced some hardships like many of us like i remember my my first job was around that that amount but i remember after paying my taxes my rent my food my going out bills my you know student loan this that i was left with more month than money I was um, incredibly irresponsible. I will say that. Yeah. I was not good about it at all. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I because of this worldview that I've mentioned, right? I was never buying anything expensive. I was just buying like dumb stuff that I didn't need, cheap, dumb stuff that I didn't need and a lot of it, right? Mm. Um, this would come in the form of like, so like keep in mind, we're talking about $40,000. So spending $200 at Forever 21 a month is not a good idea, that kind of thing, you know? Um, and, and, and that's kind of what I was doing, but I was making up mentally for the abundance by buying cheap stuff mm. as opposed to spending a lot on um on you know like a more expensive lesser things and that's just all worldview um but it, it wasn't great I, I i wasn't like living comfortably at all definitely you know what like americans what is it the majority of americans have something like 400 dollars in savings and i was definitely like one of those people i did not have savings Mm. at all like you know when i'm saying that i was irresponsible i mean like if i had that 400 dollars in my account i'm still ordering uber eats right <laughs> and so i still had everything that i wanted it just yeah. like wasn't um what someone should be doing mm -hmm. um or reasonable in the in the long-term scope of things hey i just realized something that would be like a kick-ass name for a, po a bitcoin podcast forever 21 <laughs> right. And they got sued by Ariana Grande, which I think is like. Oh, okay, let's not go there then. I think it was funny. <laughs> right. uh, you, if you don't want to be sued by anyone, it's Ariana Grande. It's too strange. But um. Okay, but so yeah. what happens then? <laughs> what happens then? I don't. After know. After the all this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm curious about the story, though. So you meet Gio, you get into IOTA, and then like, how does how does everything kind of you know perspire from there? Um, I had there was a bit of a falling out with our team because they took some, some people took some personal things 
and and there was no more uh, usable cryptonauts for a long period of time. Now here I am, um, having just gotten involved, learned all this stuff about blockchain and cryptocurrency, got to know people, went to events, and I'm like, well, now I'm screwed, right? I'm like, I had all these ideas, all these things I wanted to do, and something that, interestingly enough, I had pitched to them was, what if we make some music videos about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, right? Mm. And then that, that got pulled out. Um, I wasn't doing anything with them anymore. So I'm like, all right, let, let's reassess. Um, and I started Crypto Finally, right? So Crypto Finally, the idea for that probably mm -hmm. was in August of 2018. Okay. August of 2018 is about when we stopped doing Cryptonauts. Um, crypto Finally posted, I as Crypto Finally, posted <laughs> my first piece of Bitcoin uh um, content um, as myself on November 1st of 2018. So that would mark like the first day of the Crypto Finally brand. It's about two years old now. And what was, um, it, what was the thinking behind the name? Um, I it, I just was like, it was kind of like hammy, but it was like, like I'm, I'm here. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I wanted something I could get across all handles. Um, you know, Crypto Finally was available. It was, it was cute. Um, I never considered how deeply people take the name, right? It, it didn't cross my, that was part of my worldview. I never thought that people were going to be colloquially referring to me as finally. I never thought that people were going to yell across the room, finally, I, I never ever <laughs> envisioned the world where that happened. Yeah. So I, I didn't think that heavily about the handle, but like, you know, I've dated guys who only call me finally, like I, it's, it's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> and and uh, and yeah, so that's that's that was an unprepared uh, nicknaming that happened here. But um, finally, yeah. That, okay, it was cool, cool. And then so you you post your first content, and like, did you have some elaborate plan, or was it just like I've done enough of this to know that you know I've got something here? I had a very elaborate plan. Um, <laughs> so between August and November, I was. Um, I was learning and I was setting things up. Uh, I was doing all of these online classes about SEO and um, and search dominance and Google metrics and algorithm and social media. I I was doing you know maybe like eight hours of this stuff a day for two months, like just doing it. Like I'm gonna do this. It's happening. I had a 20 page business plan for crypto finally. Um, before I got started because I needed to justify where I was going to be putting money because obviously I, I had $400 in my bank account, et cetera. You know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't balling out. Um, when I first started doing this, I was doing better at that time. I was already investing in crypto, et cetera, but obviously we're <laughs> May to August. Um, and, um, and, uh, but like now I got all these big ideas. Now I'm buying the dip and stuff. Um, so, so I'm justifying all this stuff, 20 page business plan. What am I going to do? Then I pop out of the door with the content on November 1st. I hit hard. Um, I was, I worked really, really hard for people to see those music videos and it, it worked uh, right off the bat, uh, in the first week of me releasing them there. I mean, I had, there were articles written about me all over the place. E-bombs world was making fun of me. I, I was in the independent. People were touting um, anecdotal evidence of how to target cryptocurrency towards a millennial audience. And I'm like, fuck, I did it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to curse. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 I was like amazed, like, oh, oh my God, like all of my work over these last few months and I've made it. And you know, that was a that was not the perspective that people usually get when they start making cryptocurrency content, right? Like right off the bat, um, it was successful. And, and that's not to say that everyone is unsuccessful, but I hear this commentary a lot, even to this day, like, uh, Rachel, like, what do you even do? I do all of this, Rachel, I do TA, Rachel, I do charts of blah, blah, blah. No one cares about me. Um, <laughs> and I hear that all the time. So I must take that into consideration. It is not an easy hurdle for everyone. Um, I was doing a lot of back end stuff and, and and it was crazy. I was doing crazy girl back end SEO stuff. And when I say when I say that crazy I mean, girl back okay, you gotta go into this. Crazy <laughs> what do you girl back end SEO stuff. I there was a period of time, so I lived in New York, right? There was a period of time in November, I, it was that first week of November 2018. And this people are gonna try to recreate this, but it's so insane. Um I went around New York City 
to different coffee shops, staples, anywhere that had computers and internet access. And I bought time on their computers and I went on Google and I looked myself up and watched my God dang YouTube videos right off the bat. Now, this obviously only resulted in a certain amount of views. It was fairly low. You know, I, I, I could only do this so many times. Let's say I got 500 views from this entire endeavor. I was informing the algorithm that people cared about me. Wait, um, sorry, where did you go watch your videos? Where? At Best uh, Buy? Computer, ca internet Com cafes, staples, ah! printing centers, anywhere. Ah, public that's internet. brilliant. Okay, now I know how to break past this 50 view mark. No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> so I did that and what that did, right, was um, it was not for giving me those so views, good. but it was to inform was so the algorithm. It was so good. I mean, the I was, algorithm, I, dude. And that's some Come crazy on, I've never heard of that thing. one. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's, okay. It's like me showing up at like my ex's you know, house because broke up with me a text message like that's what that is <laughs> like, you know? okay, i thought you were gonna be like i show up my ex in my ex's house to be like just to watch your youtube video on his phone or something but no. <laughs> because uh yeah yeah it is about the algorithm right and uh yeah so all the power so, to you yeah Great. what google hears when you do that stuff google's hearing like wow she just started posting videos and for some reason everyone in new york like at least a few people in new york are searching up bitcoin and clicking on her stuff now why is it and Google hears that. Um, so it was a first interesting and good play. Um, now I can't say that was everything I did and I can't say that that played everything into it. Um, I hit super hard on everything, but like go look up, if, if anyone's curious, the E-Bombs World article about me is outrageous. They, they said I was the lamest, dumbest and worst thing on the entire internet. And then they made fun of me. I got into a fight on Twitter with E-Bombs World. Do you remember E-Bombs World? I, I don't remember that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you do though. Do you remember um, people who are watching this who might not remember? You're all like boys and you're nerds. No offense. Um, do you remember Salad Fingers? That like creepy cartoon character who's had like the green creepy hands or the um, lewd Papa Smurf How do we get videos. here in this conversation? I'm so lost right now. Or the lewd Papa Smurf videos or that- Okay, okay. So where does it all go? Or, wait, wait. Or that <laughs> sheep, that sheep, that cartoon sheep that was on like, it was like a 4chan kind of website. It was like the first ever 4chan oh, website. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, yeah, I kind of know what you're talking about. Anyway, okay, you don't know, but it's I'm fine. just pretending in, now. In let's just get through this. <laughs> anyone who does know what I'm talking about understands the significance of okay, that okay. making okay, fun okay, of okay. me. Because it's just- so dumb that they would take the time out to be the first person who ever made fun of crypto finally right and um and uh they got into a fight with me on twitter they made fun of the fact that i had 100 subscribers on youtube um uh, i've since like i've since like tweeted about my grudge with ebombs world and like tried to like make fun of them several i'm surprised they haven't blocked me yet um i every now and then i, I tweet like my follow count to ebombs world and i'm like suck it um, um, <laughs> so, so. How, how many subscribers do you have now on youtube on YouTube, I, I have like, I have like 8,000 right now. So it's not insane. But like on my across my Twitter platforms, I have like 83,000 across all my platforms, I have like 130,000 um, plus. Uh, so it's a lot more than I did at that time, for sure. Mm. Um, mm. Okay, yeah. so you got in a fight, what happened? So you just like, like, they, they just kept making fun of me. They were just mean boys on the internet. And then so every now and then I poke back at them and yell at them. And they just don't pay me any mind anymore. Um, <laughs> That's that. I mean, that's about it. But there were a lot of articles like that at that time. Um, it was that BitPay Black Friday video where I used those uh, the cringe twins. I like to call them the cringe twins. The girls who made the loom dart video. Um, move over, chicken. Uh, there's a new cat in town. Something like that. Those girls. Ever okay? If you guys are like a crypto cult enthusiast, you know what I'm talking about. The loom dart <laughs> cringe twins. Um. So the thing is, I didn't know these are girls that you can buy on Fiverr, right? You buy them on Fiverr to make like little videos and stuff. And I had them do a partial bit in this music video that I made about BitPay and Bitcoin. Um. I didn't know that these girls had a history in the cryptocurrency industry. I didn't know that every project and their mother has already used these girls for their videos. I'd like to make an addendum. It is not two girls. It is one girl in a wig. Um, but everyone in crypto has used them. Honestly, if you type Fiverr twins into Twitter. Oh, I think I've seen them. Okay. Yes, okay. you have. And so I yeah, used yeah, yeah. them for my video. And like, so everyone already knew them and I didn't, I had no awareness of this. Um, but people picked up on my video. A lot of big accounts on crypto Twitter were retweeting 
my cringy video and all this stuff. And so I got into all these fights, right? Because I was angry. I was angry that everyone was reposting my videos and using my content. And here I was, little old crypto finally with like 4,000 followers getting all beat up by these big bad nerds with 25K, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, that's how I felt. And so that was what a lot of people saw of me in the beginning was, was me mad, right? Me mad and me misappropriating my emotions about people taking my content. Um, it did did you lot. make the music video at this point? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. had, okay. So, okay, so at this point, all my stuff is out in the world and, mm. and I'm experiencing a lot, a lot of different big influencers who are taking my content, downloading it and re-uploading it to their platforms. And I have mm. no following and no voice, right? Mm. So I am screaming all over the internet, like, <gasps> look at me, like, please people, because everyone's watching my content. I don't even remember who one of these Twitter accounts was, but he posted maybe 45 seconds of my whole video. He just posted it and that it got like 200,000 views and on, on his Twitter account. Um, he was just a trolling sort of a cat and, and I don't, I really don't remember his name, but I was so angry, right? Because like there I was, I had spent all this money. I had spent all this time, months doing all this hour, going from place to place in New York city, like all of this work. And then these influencers in the crypto industry took my work and downloaded it and re-uploaded it to their own platforms. And they were getting all the views and like, oh my God, that was a hit, you know, like that really hurt because it's not the same as starting your own company. Your stuff's not proprietary. If they want to do it, they can. And the fact of the matter is they had the eyes on them and I didn't. Right. So I got into a lot of fights in the beginning about that. Um, my more notor my more notorious fights included, uh, BitBoy Crypto, Joshua Davis, and Crypto Fungus, right? So this is still 2018. I am getting into screaming and infamous fights with these people. Um, the BitBoy, BitBoy, which is interesting now because he's got millions of followers and we're friends now. So like, this is not like me talking shit. He knows what happened in this story. We've, we've had this conversation in the real world um, and it comes up. I, I think he still talks about it too. And he's also better than me in every way now. So he's, he can't feel any shade about this. Like... BitBoy has made it. Um, <laughs> like, BitBoy has made it. Um, uh, he he downloaded, I have this one music video called Because I Bought High, right? And it's a remake of Afro Man's Because I Got High. And it's this full animated piece. And like, I had like three editors help me with it. And I had like outsourced the vocals because it's a male song, men are singing it. I had someone help me with the production of the music. I, and then me, myself and I had done like all of these assets and like created all of this stuff and put it all together and done all this. And like, it took so long to make that video. He downloaded the video and he uploaded it to his own YouTube channel. At the time, he had like 4,000 YouTube subscribers and like 25,000. Who's he? BitBoy? Still? Bit Boy. Okay, and okay. And then? 4,000 YouTubes at 25 Twitter. But I was little Miss Nobody. I had 100 YouTube subscribers. I had okay. 4,000 on Twitter. Um, he downloaded and uploaded it. And then he like posted a link to the video on Twitter. And then he tagged me in a comment like, oh, by the way, thanks, Crypto, finally. And then I went and I clicked and I watched his video. And my entire music video played from the start when you clicked on the video all the way through. Nothing else happened but my music video until the end of my music video. My video was maybe two minutes long. So for the whole first two minutes of his YouTube video, my thing played. People do that? They just like literally Not just anymore. take people's content? I, I made an example, sir. Um, they do don't tell. Do anymore. tell. Because, because I can tell you that when that happened, I didn't handle it properly. I can tell you this. There are a lot of people who saw this video that I then made where I called him bitch boy. And I like, I yelled in a TikTok style format, but I was really mad because nobody was listening to me. So in the beginning, no one cared. To, now when creators come out, when small creators come out and say that influencers are doing this, the influencers get a lot in a lot of trouble, right? Like the internet tackles on it. The internet says, no, don't do that. But at this time in 2018, the internet was not doing this at this time in 2018 we were really only that OG group that existed and the bystanders. Um, we were not this fleshed out crypto community that we are today, right? The OG community did not enjoy the fact that I was cursing at BitBoy. 
didn't like it. Who the fuck are you crypto finally? Why do you think you can come into our industry and yell at our influencers? Shame on you. People were calling me insane. People were like undermining the fact that I was upset about this. Like, but keep in mind again, my entire video played before he did a single, a single thing. And there was no like clickable link to my page. There was, he didn't make any, there wasn't a, there was a little logo. There was my logo in the corner with no words and no clickable link. That's all that he put like my, like, by my avi and um and i was mad and then he sent me this message that said like i was doing you a favor you don't have any followers basically and then he blocked me and then the, so following that i made my angry video i didn't come off the bat with the angry video it was following him telling me that he was doing me a favor and blocking me and not fixing the issue and then i made a TikTok video it was crypto finally's first ever rager um <laughs> and it was just like i was just so angry and i talked about what i just said to you but like not so diplomatically, um, how long it took me to make the video, how long, how small creators are trying, blah, 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 blah. And then that was my first, like that video got like 25,000 views. And like, to me at the time, that was a ton. Wait, wait was this a music video or this was like a, just a you this talking was a to me the camera video? yelling at the camera on Twitter video. Yelling at the camera. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Kitty. Wow. Okay. So, so excited. I didn't know. Um, any of okay. I don't even know who BitBoy is. So, you know, you use this negative energy and, and, and you, okay. So and this all happened. Right. <laughs> and like, and, and then like, I, you know, that community didn't, people were mad at me. The guy that I was dating in the real world wouldn't talk to me over that. That's how like shitty the crypto community was at that time. Right. I was, I was dating a guy in crypto and he literally like stopped t texting me back and like yelled at me. <laughs> he took bit boy yes! side. <laughs> Sorry. I'm yelling. What? He was a shithead. Dude. I don't need to talk to him ever again in my life. That's the point. The point <laughs> is like, literally that's how messed up and like culty the crypto community was. Everyone was like, how dare you crypto finally? How dare you? Wow. And, and, Wow. And, um, and but okay. stuff like that happened a lot. So like, and then, and then, so at that point I'm amped up when creators are taking my stuff and it's continuing to happen, but I have this as my experience in my background. Right. So like now I'm extra angry and I'm passionate because I believe in what is right. Um, and, and, um, got into like a few more fights about it here and there before I finally just let it go. Right. There was a point in time where I finally just let it all go. And I started getting a little more popular and I had a little more sway when it comes to righteousness. But yeah, that was, that was when, when did your subscriber thing start to really, so was this the inflection point, this like uh, rage video? At the end of that angry thing, I think I had something like, I think that I was at like 4,000 subscribers, right? It oh, wasn't, wow. it wasn't okay. a ton. It was, but it was, it was there. Um, then I was just like really dabbling. Um, a lot of people were upset by me, right? Like a lot of people were upset by my general presence in this industry. I will stand by what I have always stood by, which is that, no offense, most of the influencers, most of the influencers have uh, shilled scams, uh, posted, you know, done like in, in inaccurate paid groups, led people down bad paths, done bad trades, wrecked your finances, given financial advice when they said they weren't going to. A lot of bad things have happened. I have done none of these things. I've done none of these things ever. I am just a girl on the internet, um, <laughs> just living my life and having fun. People uh, have disliked my... I, I want to say, I'm going to put it in a happy light, my charisma and uh, outgoing spirit um, <laughs> and, and my, my, my take on the crypto industry, which is quite different um, than what has been here in the past. Um, seeing a crypto influencer who just makes music videos and yells was a very big first in 2018, right? We see a lot more of this drama and a lot more of this playfulness now in 2020 because we have truly evolved as a social space. But at that time, who was I and what was I doing? I was new on the scene and I was the first kind of mainstream normie. And I think that a lot of people can actually agree and attest to this. I was one of the first normies who was like, I'm gonna get on crypto Twitter and I'm gonna do this and I'm not gonna be technical. and I'm not gonna do what you guys are doing. I'm gonna do something totally different. Mm. And people were not vibing with me. Um, they were not vibing with that. And, but it was getting me a lot of attention back and forth. People are talking about me. Who is this girl? Why is she doing this? Doesn't make sense. I still, to this day, don't think any of this was their business. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but um, it started getting more and more attention. Um, keep in mind, though, my goal as well was to elaborate on this brand and to find a brand that works in the cryptocurrency space uh, and be what I want it to be. The end goal of my endeavor here, right, 
is that I didn't want to work for the man the way that I did uh, at the retail place, at Blue Man Group, um, or as a substitute teacher. I wanted to be able to be myself at its core. Um, and that's what I wanted from crypto. So I- Rachel, I have a question for you. So you say crypto, right? I know you got in with that geo, whatever that company, right? But I'm just quite wondering, was there a point where you were like, wait, hold on. Like, yeah, I've had some negative experiences in this space, but like what was kind of like keeping you in this space? Was it Bitcoin? Was it like Ethereum? Was it just like, I don't know. Like, like what, what was kind of, yeah. What was like that fire that was lit that you're like, nah, there's something here. Was, was it just something about crypto in general? It's, it's, I mean, obviously the freedom of it all, but primarily on it, if I have to like word it simply it, the, like the revolution um, for the fact that I, you know, I'm entering this and I'm under the impression that I'm never going to have another opportunity like this in this life, right? This is it. This is my it. Uh, it is crypto. It is Bitcoin. It is the ground floor of something massive. This is the radio. This is the internet. This is sliced bread. Like this um, industry, I, I can see the massive potential. I can see where we're headed, where we're going. And that getting in in 2018 was something that not a lot of humans on this planet were going to do. Um, I missed the boat on the early, early adopters, but I didn't miss the boat on common consumer culture. And I saw that and I saw it at the consensus parties by who was in the room. I saw it by the kinds of videos I was making at the Kryptonauts. And I saw an opportunity for someone like me to get involved. So that that's why I stayed because there wasn't anybody like me. And, you know, fast forward to 2020, we can argue that now there are quite a few brands that do similar kind of tactics to what I do, do similar fun content. There's a Bitcoin bubble who does those parody videos. There are several other women who come out who are out here now. There were not a lot of women in the influencer uh, sector. And in 2018, there were not a lot at all. There were no, like no women who were well-respected or had followings who did anything in a, in a lifestyle branding way. I, I can say that. And I will say that with confidence that um, while people fight me on the selfie thing, I get a lot of back. That's we're going to, we can get into that. A lot of the kind of content, a lot of the common consumer content that I create, a lot of the mainstream accessibility that I offer um, through my social media accounts and the way that I target cryptocurrency it has been mimicked, it has been repeated, and it has been uh, recreated in mass by other influencers. And, and I mean, I think it's amazing. I don't mean to have my head up my own ass and be too egotistical, but it's it's what happened. <laughs> it's what happened. And I saw it <laughs> happening because we, did, we were not what we are today in 2018. So it was that opportunity. It was that opportunity to start to branch out to what we are today. Um, and the growth has been insane. But that's why interesting why. interesting okay so now you've got these like uh you've got now subscribers i mean i consider four thousand pretty sizable um and you've created some heady content you've created some musical content which i think is awesome by the way i mean that's one of my big pet peeves is that this space feels like engineering school to me it's like 99 dudes and like one girl and oh uh, it's like it, it's more than that right um Okay, so what happens then? So what happens then? Like with your brand, like, I don't know, what's the next big like kind of milestone in your, in your journey? Gosh, um, okay. So I kind of think about like individually, um, I had a lot of big hits, right? So like there are, there are moments that start popping up that we might consider like viral or semi-viral in our community. And those start being the big hitter moments. So BitBoy happened. Um, I revolutionized the giveaway in December twenty. In December 2019 or 2018, maybe 2019, I revolutionized the giveaway. Um, that was a big heavy hitter, uh, and then everyone started redoing their giveaways. Like I, I have been, I have been influential. <laughs> and then, okay, so there were always crypto giveaways, right? People always did crypto giveaways. You guys know what I'm talking about. Of course, People of course, yeah. Day because I become infamous because of my uh, influential influence. Um, <laughs> People always used to do them. I did not make up the idea of the crypto giveaway. Mainstream influencers never did successful crypto giveaways. They were not successful in 2018. Um, I don't know if you were here for that. They, they sucked. Uh, influencers got like 50 retweets, stuff like that. It wasn't going well. Only like the weird uh, sort of like giveaway centric accounts were doing the giveaway centric stuff, right? Um, 
I'm like, hey, like, why can't we as influencers start giving away Bitcoin? Revolutionary idea. I start doing it better. Um, I start getting engagement. Influencers start saying, that's a scam. You can't do giveaways crypto finally. Um, influencers can't do that. A huge controversy. Um, I was giving away Digibyte. There was an article written about how my Digibyte giveaways were worse for the Digibyte ecosystem than they were helpful for the consumers. Um, there was math that was done. Um, and I, and that, that was a big, like, moment. So if you're, I, that was just an all encompassing moment. So that's something else that was big. I got a lot of attention because a lot of people were talking about me. Um, I was on MTV. Uh, you know, it was stuff like that. I was making like music videos that were- Did you get on MTV? Oh, was that because of the music video from the first one or a couple other I don't ones? Know or... why I was that's crazy, right? I, like, no, I, I don't you think about it. <laughs> um, I think that, okay. So the reason I was chosen for MTV that I stand by, uh, I'm sorry that none of this is linear and it doesn't make sense, but like when you, it's all good. When you do <laughs> social media stuff, like this is just like kind of something that it's my life is not linear, right? My life is sort of reaction and response um, to audience, to the internet, to what's happening outside of me, um, because I don't believe that brands can lead in a headstrong way. I listen, right? I listen and I take the paths. Um, so for me, even in and explaining what's happening here it's not linear because it never was uh while i lived it right there were things coming at me from all angles and all ends different storylines and b plots that that are flowing through what i'm trying to do with crypto finally which makes it hard for me to explain it yeah yeah no, i know i know yeah. what you mean i know what you mean absolutely <laughs> but like what you know whatever you remember to be yeah. important and, um, i think is, is good so um, okay so continue MTV. MTV, MTV, like how the heck did that happen? I grew up, you know, it's like, okay, so tell me. They reached out to me on Twitter. Um, it was crazy. Isn't Twitter was, so badass? Like I, when I discovered it, I don't know, a long time ago, I was like, this is the future of like business development of like, this is how deals are going to get done. Like period. It's not email. It's not anyway. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so they reached out over Twitter. It's exciting. Um, I think I had like, I think I had like 10,000 or 15,000 followers at the time when they reached okay. out. Um, and I think they specifically wanted a woman. Um, I think that was something that they had mentioned to me in our conversations. Um, and, and the reason for that was, so they were doing this, they were doing this docu-style um, television series about a crime. It was a, a crime docu-series. And this episode was about a SIM swap hack that happened in a cryptocurrency arena. A bunch of crypto was stolen from a SIM swap hacker. Funnily enough, the crimes happened at Consensus in 2018, uh, where I was. Um, so it's all very at home. And anyone who's been in the industry long enough um, knows how at home, like we, they know that everyone knows everyone. Anyone who was here in 2018 knows everyone, you know, like we were still new, whether or not like the old heads want to believe 2018 was new, it was new. Um, so they wanted they wanted a, a woman um, and because all of the people that they had on the crypto show um, were men, the crime took place in consensus 2018. They sent me a DM from an egghead account. Um, so it was like a dead account with like no profile picture or anything. They're like, we're with FTV. And I was like, I'm going to get killed today. Um, and I, I wrote him back, though, because who am I to ignore this? And you know what? I bet that they reached out to some other people who did ignore it. And that was dumb. And so I reached out to them. Um, turns out they worked for this third party production company, sent me some info on it. I looked them up. They had done some spots with Netflix, MTV, like uh, Lifetime, stuff like that in the past. So they, they looked legit to me. Got on a... Uh, Skype call with two producers. Both of them were women. This is when I feel comfortable. This is also when I should note to the viewers at home that they, you know, if this was a, a kidnapping or trafficking plan, this is exactly what they would have done. Um, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not, yeah, they would have. So everyone be safe when you make deals on the internet because what I then did was accept their plane ticket and fly to Los Angeles by myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so it just, uh, it, obviously I was on MTV and it was good, but I just like, as far as, you know, precautionary tales are, I just want to reiterate that as I tell this story, I still don't think it was the safest <laughs> thing to have done. Um, so this egghead account reaches out to me. I get on this, um, this call with these two women. Everything sounds great. They're lovely. Um, I take their plane ticket. I fly to LA. Um, I am being put up in a really nice hotel. Um, this is the first time that I'm sort of being taken seriously in an outside industry. 
I didn't have the perspective to know how big of a deal this was, right? I knew it was a big deal on the fact that I was going to be on MTV because like I come from the regular world and I think MTV is cool, right? I had no idea how big of a deal it truly was in the mainstream light of crypto, right? Um, so I did the MTV bit. Fast forward, I think it took like nine months for them to edit it and actually get it out, right? So it was a long time from once I shot it to when it got out. When it got out, the crypto industry rebelled. The crypto industry was very, very unhappy by MTV's choice to label me the crypto expert. Um, yeah, I was the crypto expert. And I made it, MTV, mom. I was MTV's first ever crypto expert, and no, 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 um, no math men can take that from me. No matter what they do, no Boom. matter what they try, I will always Boom. be. Um, and so, so the internet was a little upset. More articles were written. Um, there was one in News BTC. I think the title was uh, "Crypto Industry Gets Massive Mainstream Exposure Surprisingly Salty," um, and and it was a lot of that. Um, why crypto finally is the girl who makes those cringe music videos? She does selfies. She yells at everybody. <laughs> like why why is she on MTV talking about cryptocurrency? Um, and the honest and like who watches MTV? Uh, it was for a different demographic, and it was. One of the first instances of this mainstream exposure for a different demographic. Um, hmm. And I was, I had <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting. I do remember that actually. That's crazy, you know. When you tell when you tell all these stories, you're just like, I did all this. Like that, that's that's impressive. So okay, so continue, continue. So this is exciting. Mm -hmm. So MTV airs, <laughs> um, and it turns out that they have edited out every positive thing that I have to say about God, right? dude. And they've left in, I think I maybe got like 30 seconds of vocal time on that episode, which is kind of still a lot in comparison to like, you know, a lot of time they give other people, but they got me saying that like crypto can be dangerous because uh, you are your own, it's in your custody, right? So I'm explaining custodial versus non-custodial. Um, and how being a custodial, um, being, sorry, and how having a custodial service can at times be more safe for people who are unprepared, right? But they clipped out just the part where I say that it can be more dangerous for an average person who might not know what they're doing. It, keep in mind that this is all in context that I've also given them a breakdown on how to use paper wallets and what a seed phrase is. And, you know, I have done all of the back work. You know, we were in that room for eight hours filming and they use 30 seconds. Mm. Um, that's the scope of like how different me being there to the episode was. They use me saying it's dangerous. People mm. are up in arms. How could she? How could she? <laughs> and, yeah, I know. Um, okay. And so that's that's what happened there it got some mainstream exposure um i know your audience is our people who are a little more well versed and honestly uh people who are a little um higher up in the totem pole on crypto that's that's the way that i sort of perceive you um and like the people that you hang out with and like the people who are probably watching this right higher totem pole people um I, I don't know if I should bother them with like the next few moments of viral nature. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what I did miss? I missed the bikini keynote tweet. That was also viral, but like stuff like that, that got a lot of attention. Um, Yo, hit, hit us up with whatever you think is relevant. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think of my followers as that high up. I actually. do. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, oh, man. No, my new favorite word is degens. I don't know how it exactly works into that whole meme culture, but I just like love that there's people called degens in our, in our, in our community or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I, think they got, I think they just got extra hype around the DeFi phase. Um, right? But, hey, hey, I, I do have one question for you. You have, I don't know if it's still pinned on your Twitter profile, but you, for the longest time, you had this thing that was pinned where you were talking at a conference or something and you had a a bit of a message there and I think it was like what like at the end of the day like these are all like cute stories at all right but at the end of the day like this all leads into something right which is like what's your kind of like wh wh where do you think that that you add the most amount of, well you can add the most amount of value and where like more people need to get involved in the bitcoin space you know what I mean like like where businesses and marketing kind of come together but do you, do you have do you remember what I'm talking about this like twitter yeah. thing that you had do you want to maybe paraphrase some of that so my overarching goal in all of what I've been explaining and all of what I've been doing is demographic expansion of the cryptocurrency industry and targeting that by 
creating accessibility for common consumer audiences and people who are outside of the demographic we currently experience here to be able to get involved. What I do is I lower the barrier of understanding. To me, the barrier of understanding comes before the barrier of education. Now, what's the barrier of understanding to me? That is the simple phase in which someone knows that Bitcoin exists and wonders, is this for me? That is understanding that is not education. Before they can start to learn, about mm. before they even care to mm. learn about what bitcoin is or how bitcoin works or am i going to open up a wallet they think to themselves is this for me and that's the barrier of understanding which must be targeted before the learning phase a lot of people in this industry skip that barrier um so that is what i target now the way i break this down there are three kinds of people who have an awareness uh, to bitcoin or just who are generally not involved in bitcoin Group one, think it's a scam. They just think we're scammers. They don't really care for it. They're not really the demographic we're targeting because they're gonna require a lot of devil's advocacy. That's the group that's gonna FOMO in at 100K, right? Group two, people who are aware of Bitcoin, but think that it's just too difficult. Someone like myself who heard about Bitcoin in 2016, 2017, but thought all of these things about like, I'm just never gonna be able to do that. That. Like, and I, I wasn't even going to take the time to ask the questions because I didn't see a world where I could be involved in this in 2016 and 2017. I'm living in that $40,000 world working everyday average jobs. This is reality. It is not reality for me to be buying uh, internet cryptocurrencies and be making millions like I'm hearing about in the, on the news. You know, that is not reality to me and and there was no no way for me to do it i didn't understand it and that was my big barrier of understanding i think that a lot of people are encompassed by that barrier where they know about bitcoin but like they they just you know they can't take that first step be it for whatever reason and, and i i think that a lot of really intelligent people in this space need to remember this and this is something that i advocate for in in all of my like anecdotal stories, in my selfies, in saying I can wear a bikini and do a keynote, this is something that I advocate for. Um, not everybody is as uh, uh, is where you are um, when it comes to intelligence about in-depth technological stuff like the blockchain. When it comes to uh, dense aspects of this industry, not everyone is going to understand it. Not everyone cares to understand it, and it becomes a larger barrier. Then it becomes a selling point for a lot of common consumers. Um, and so making people understand you can do this and it doesn't matter who you are and it doesn't matter how you represent yourself is so incredibly important if someone had told me there was a spunky girl on the internet who posts selfies and and, and talks about like getting a boyfriend and like like how all these guys are nerds and like she figured out how to buy bitcoin i might have thought that i could have done it but there wasn't anyone like me. Um, there was there was no one that I could have looked to and thought this seems easy. And the content was dense and hard, you know? And, and to this day, a lot of the OG content and the technical analysis, it's still dense and hard. Um, but I didn't understand it. I wasn't gonna go on YouTube and watch one of these YouTubers and be like, oh, I get it, I get it, I'm gonna go buy now. <laughs> it wasn't gonna happen. Um, so I target that, I target that. Group Interesting. People. Yeah, and and just to like round out that last thought, the, the third group of people are the people who have absolutely no exposure. Those people have no idea Bitcoin exists at all. But um, the curve of understanding for people who want to get involved, that's where I do the majority of my work. Um, trying to break that down. Yeah, there's a lot of educational stuff that needs to come in. Um, a lot of the commentary that I hear about my work, uh, if people are familiar with crypto finally, if you're familiar with any of the infamous or viral moments that I've sort of been touching on, you know, a lot of the commentary is like, where's the educational content? Um, and first of all, there is a lot of educational content. I have hours and hours mm. and hours. And hours. Like I, I make YouTube videos three times a week where I talk about a easy entry things like uh, dollar cost averaging, uh, you know, Beautiful. risk aversion, um, mm. yeah, preserving your profits, things like that, that everyday people need to learn. Um, mm. I do this stuff, but the main target of my work, you know, especially when it comes to like my personality and, and my brand 
is really just that understanding, right? It's not, it's, I don't need to be a one man army who targets the everyday consumers and provides the dense educational content. That's just not necessary. Um, so I think it's important that we have people who do all, do all different kinds of things for people who are in different levels and different um, kinds of uh, places in terms of their cryptocurrency journeys, right? Um, but I think it's really important for the people who do the dense stuff to remember that their, their responsibility um, and their contribution matters in the place that it matters, right? And that mine matters in the place that it matters. I do not need to start doing dense technical work in order to make their work more important. I am merely that barrier of understanding and entry. Yeah. Wow. I, that's powerful. I think that's, 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 that's a noble cause and uh, maybe quite often overlooked. And, and I can definitely attest to that. So good on you for, for filling that void. Um, hey, back to your story. I'm just curious. I know we only have 15 minutes left. By the way, I'm, like I said, I, I'm down to do this again anytime. Um, but, uh, but, but just to your, in terms of like the key highlights, if we had to round it out now, what, what, so after that event, what are some of the other big things that's happened over the last few years? Because it's like almost 2021 now, right? So yeah, like how's kind of the, you know, the, uh, you, you've talked about your backstory. You talked about crypto finally and kind of the brand and the void it's filling, right? But just curious kind of like where you are are today with all of it and 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 yeah and then you know kind of what the next steps are there so um like i said about social media being a moving beast on like b lines right and like a lines and b lines i have all of these different goals that i wish to accomplish with my a line being that demographic expansion uh and barrier of understanding and entry that i just mentioned uh b line breaks sort of down the um the demographic expansion which is I, I really want people in our industry to have their own agency and their own, um, their own place here. I want there to be representation. I am an outspoken like feminist, right? So fast forward to the Binance Awards where I was nominated as the uh, best uh, crypto influencer in North America by Binance, right? Now, Boom. I mean, it was awesome. Come on. Globally. Bye. Right. So now globally, mm. Binance has nominated 25 influencers globally, and I am the only woman. Um, mm. Yeah. And so I point this out and um, I'm the only one who pointed it out. And, and people that, you know, there are people who like that I pointed it out and people who didn't like that I pointed out. And this is all filling in a lot of the narrative that I've done for a very long time, which is that I am an outspoken feminist. I will yell what is right because I, I think that we should treat people right. And I think that the cryptocurrency industry needs to jump out of their nerd socks and into the 21st century where we are nice to girls, right? That's just it. Like, I'm not telling you have to white knight and simp, but you need to be respectful to all human beings, right? You cannot mm, be sexist. You cannot be racist. You cannot be discriminatory. And that mm -hmm. is something that I... I preach heavily, right? And a lot of people give me this shit too. It's like, that's not technical. What does this have to do with blockchain? It's like, I don't care. It has to do with the fact that you are rude. Um, and so I, I do a lot of that. And I like to use my voice um, to promote things that actually help human beings like that. Um, so that's something that I follow through on. The Binance example is huge. Well, that is a massive landmark. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and CZ actually retweet this video where I, I I'm straight up it, so it's it was like it it was in the it was in the light of the BitBoy crypto video where I am yelling at the camera and I am tired and I'm in my pajamas and I have not woken up yet and I am upset and and I'm talking about <laughs> how it is wrong that oh okay wait I got my Instagram banned as well as some girls that I work with and we thought it was a, it was in direct correlation to me being vocal about the feminism on the finance things that's. Blah, 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 blah. I yell on the internet about how my Instagram has been banned because they're trying to keep women down. CZ retweets it. Um, oh. Yeah, that, that video was on CZ's page and it's me like, <laughs> so, um, and um, I get a lot of, you know, uh, response to that. Um, Cointelegraph wrote about it, Coindesk wrote about it. Um, Binance responded and said that they will be more mindful in the future. Um, you know, I never blamed Binance. I never said it was something that they did um, with with malice, right? I think it was something they did with negligence um, and, and to points to the fact that they could have a room full of people who decided on those 25 nominees and not one pointed out that I was the only woman, not one said to somebody in that room, this is a bad idea. And that 
is what I really advocate for and want to make a change. And I want one person in that room to look at the list of 25 people on this earth and say, crypto finally shouldn't be the only woman we picked. Um, because listen, there were two sides I could have taken to this. There were two sides that I could have taken to this. And, and the first side was the one that I took, that there's a gender disparity issue and there is something that they are not seeing that needs to be pointed out, um, that there are more women who are deserving of nominations like this, that it cannot be all men who are representing this industry if we want to offer accessibility to outside demographics. Um, or I could have just said, I must be better than all of the other women. I could have just come right off the bat and said, you know what, this list makes sense to me. I'm the only woman on this list because I am the best. Um, and what's interesting about my brand at this point is that because I have been so different, a lot of people take a devil's advocate to my narrative, no matter what it is that I do. So uh, what we saw, a lot of women even in the industry started jumping out. Oh, she's making this a women's issue again. We don't care about women's issues. This is about crypto. A lot of right wing garbage. Sorry, boys. But, um, you know, a lot of this stuff about how it wasn't a women's issue. I'm just trying to use this to my advantage so I can win, blah, 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 blah. These are the same girls that if I had said I was the best would have screamed that they deserve to be on the ballot. Ah, people devil's advocate me every single day and I'm used to it, right? It's you, just you, in you my meditate walk. Through it? How do you deal with all this? How do you deal with it? Like you journal, like you just uh, go for a run, like-, like try to survive, <laughs> must be stressful, man. Yeah. But like, it, it's, so, so that was a big moment. Um, But yeah, underlying, mm. I keep doing it because I think that it matters. I Good. Oh, sorry, sorry, just back up maybe like uh, 15, 20 seconds. Uh, sorry, I might have a little bit of a technical issue there. What was the last thing you heard? Uh, well, I mean, okay, look, I mean, in terms of big points, this Binance thing, I think is, you know, obviously a big deal. Everything you talked about in terms of, uh, you know, how you don't feel like it's right. And uh, and you think, you know, more more women should be on that list. And oh. look, as a father of two girls, I love that. Like, I, I agree. I think, I think there, and, you know, I actually think there are a lot of women in Bitcoin behind the scenes behind the camera like for example whether it be my wife uh or you know hundreds of other like whether it be like the star programmers at Unocoin, um you know there are many that i know of behind the scenes um but there aren't many that have like that have the courage to be like i'm gonna go out there and take on the world and you know put myself and my face and my name and my brand out there and so that that i give you kudos for and um and look you know i, I think we're kind of coming to the, the end of this i wanted to give you an opportunity to also and i think you've maybe already touched on this which is like the contrarian belief question right which is the peter Thiel question around like what's one truth you hold that you think most other Bitcoiners would disagree with you on. And you've touched on, I think, a few themes, but do you want to take that one on or, or do you want to pass on that question? Yeah, I mean, I think that an all encompassing answer to that, like including everything that I've said, is that I think that everyone in this industry should just be allowed to have their own agency for whoever they are. Because Bitcoin, um, if we are considering it at face value for what Bitcoin is and what we need it for, it is a mass adoptive state where everyone, no matter what they do in this world, is using it, holding it, transacting in it, um, or accepting it in some way. We want people to use cryptocurrency. I do not care who they are, and you should not either. Um, and and I think that is a big contrarian belief. I think that there's a lot of who you should be or what you should do or what you need to be to be someone. Who you need to eat. <laughs> now it's even what you need to eat or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's, it's too much. And that's one of my reasons for doing this whole thing too, is just to kind of like break these molds, right? And then people think, I think, at least a third of my guests thus far have been women. I've, I've been definitely, you know, trying my best to to put a, sh a shine or a light on on a lot of the women that I I'm aware of. Um. Hey. Okay. So I, I think that's a that's a good one. A good contrarian belief. And then if we were to take that same question and apply it to the world at large, outside of our little Bitcoin or crypto bubble, um, any any thoughts on that front? Oh man. Um. I I mean I think the same thing. Which if you take it in a liberal worldview, I. I it, I'm sorry, it's much more liberal when you apply it in a world scope. Um, but yeah, I think that people should just be people and people should just like mind their business unless you're doing something harmful. Um, and that's a contrary in belief too with a lot of like, you know, politics and what we're seeing going on right now. But um, I think that if everyone was just like, you know, respectful, that life would be easier. Um, as an influencer, 
this is an interesting uh, take on that that question specifically. Um, I see media a lot more critically than I used to, right? And I see that a lot, a lot of this divisiveness a lot more critically than I was before I was a media person. Um, I have a better understanding of what audiences attach themselves to um, and what it can cause emotional reactions and things like that. And, and uh, it, it's just, I, I think that people should be more focused on what's going on in their lives. Um, I think that a lot of this getting swept up is, is dangerous. And Rachel, how do, how do, if there, I mean, so uh, would it be a mistake to say that, you know, if there are crypto businesses or Bitcoin businesses out there that wanted to engage with you, like there's, there's a way to do that, or are you kind of working on some separate projects or like, what I guess like my question is like, how do people that are interested in kind of the way you think and the way you create, uh, how do they get in touch with you, you know, and, and what does that look like? I'm curious. Yes. Um, so I do marketing. Surprise, surprise. Um, I do marketing, uh, everything from SEO analytics to digital footprint. I will not go around New York City for you um, to um, to like social management, brand narrative, brand voice, um, developing strategic growth plans. Um, so all of this sort of plays into what I just explained about crypto. Finally, um, I love a good brand narrative. I think personality is the number one thing. Uh, I apply this to companies in the crypto space. Um, I, I work with several um, ongoing, uh, if you want to see more about sort of what I do in marketing, um, I have a website, it's cryptofinallyonline.com. Um, boys, please refresh if it says bad gateway as that is a redirect to rachelsiegelnyc.com. I built the website myself. And so I am just, I, I can't rebuild a whole new website right this second all on my lonesome. Um, so that's the website. Uh, go on Twitter at crypto finally and uh, send me a DM. Um, I focus on organic engagement growth strategy um, and, and that brand narrative, which is so important. I think that a lot of marketers overlook um, creating a brand that people care to engage with. And that is really my end goal for crypto companies is to be able to access common consumer markets and, and allow their product to get outside the bounds of just the crypto industry. Hey, have you, have you read about this, this book called story brand story brand? I'm going to send you a link. This guy's on YouTube and stuff too. And he's just like, so on point and and the importance of like storytelling uh is really is an art form and i don't think people have really you know explored it um i, I literally took scene. a storytelling uh class in college like in a college course no yeah. way no way we got to do like a session on that alone i mean that is th these kind of things are so important it's not just about like ones and zeros and like elliptical curves and sha 256 it's like like to me i'm an engineer and i kind i'm not gonna even lie i don't get all of it right i mean nobody does it's like trying to be like oh i, I understand outer space like no you don't nobody understands it like it, it, it's hard <laughs> um but but to me the other aspects of it like you said i, I never thought of it that way i gotta admit like the whole I, I we focus a lot i focus a lot on education education but like the whole understanding thing you talk, talk about or like like piquing people's interest or once they have a bit of interest like getting them over that hump to even care that's oh yeah i was gonna ask you a question on that so i recently read that i don't know maybe 0.6 percent of the whole world has maybe a crypto or bitcoin wallet um so i guess it could be argued that like that space that you're talking about of like where people are kind of like on the fence is really the funnel if you will to like that if you had to put like a i know like we probably don't have a lot of math or data to back it up but if you had to put a percentage of like the global population that is in that bucket that bucket where they're like i've heard about bitcoin it sounds kind of interesting but i'm not ready to get a wallet or you know sign up with any exchange or anything like that but like do you think it's like one percent of the world i don't know maybe more. like like 0. 0.5 i think it's yeah, more maybe i think percent. that there's like i think there's yeah. a percentage of the world that's heard about this because like we've gotten a ridiculous we're talking about the percentage of the world that has exposure to me media has a phone in their hand that, mm. that like so let's take from that. so maybe what maybe 10 percent a 10 percent of the people <laughs> who have phones in their hands let's say that okay so that's a massive that's like billions of because people I, maybe or so i don't know hundreds of millions I think at it's least getting so much mainstream exposure even if it's just a ping from the daily news through to your notifications that bitcoin hit an all-time high you've heard the word bitcoin at this mm -hmm. point um yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's just it's 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 wondering what comes next but yeah hey rachel listen uh 
I was going to say any any parting words and parting words of wisdom uh, before we kind of bring this one to a close. And like I said, I'm down next tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, whenever you want to do a follow up. Uh, I'm game. I know you're pretty busy, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. But yeah, any any last words in terms of you already mentioned your Twitter handle, but I don't know anything yeah. else. Um, it's just at crypto finally across platforms. Uh, I would request that Bitcoiners all be kind to each other um, and that I'm excited to see uh, where we head in the next couple of years. And, and yes, Love I will come back and talk to you before then. I'm excited for it. Love it. Mic drop. And by the way, we're going to take a bunch of this content, like with the Unocoin team, or we're going to try and write some blogs around it, take out really kind of the main, you know, messages and whatnot and try and get it out there as well. So yeah, so stay tuned. And then thank you again. This is, this is amazing. Okay, I'm going to stop it now.